Welcome to our services at Trinity United Methodist Church. It's good to see all of you this Lord's Day, this first Sunday of June. We will be sharing in Holy Communion a little later in our worship service. But at this point, I'd like to share a few announcements with you if I might. I'm Joseph James, the pastor of this place. And I'd like to also uh, invite you to share who you are, a little bit about you in the pew registration pad. That's a great way for us to keep updated on all our current information about you that uh, we need to know for our mailing lists and, and contact information. And if you have any messages for the offices or anything like that, it's great to know those things. Uh, a couple of announcements, some of them I'll just highlight from the bulletin. You'll see about Salkahatchee. You'll see about Vacation Bible School. We're still in need of volunteers and the material that you could get off the board uh, in front of Charlie's office. We'd be glad to, to have that. We'll be starting VBS in a couple of weeks. I uh, want to give you a, a heads up about something that's coming up in the life of our congregation. Our deployed spouses dinner that we have out at Shaw will be Monday, January 25th. And if you'd like to be a part of that, please let us know in the church office so that we can uh, get your name on the list and make sure we've got all the pertinent information that we need to get on the base. Uh, a couple of uh, corrections in the bulletin. Our processional hymn this morning is hymn number 139. And during that hymn, keep an ear open as you sing. We have a new set of chimes that Steve's going to get to read to, to ring a little later in the morning. And so uh, we'll be hearing those for the first time. We'll be uh, dedicating those a little later in the summer but please keep that in mind. But our first hymn uh, is hymn number 139, and then our last hymn, To God Be the Glory, we'll be singing the first and the last. I know that it is summertime and that many of you, like me, will have plans of being with families and travel, lots of places to go and things to do. May God bless your summer and your Sabbath time. But I want to remind you of a couple of things that you could do during the summer to stay connected with us here at Trinity. Please note our website is trinityumcsumpter.org. It's a good place to find uh, the YouTube videos of our worship services. Uh, we, we usually uh, post this, today's worship service will be posted by Tuesday, uh, maybe Wednesday at the latest. It's also a place for you to uh, give online if you'd like to, if you're going to be away for a while and like to uh, give online, that would be a, certainly a way to do it. And you can also find out about monthly drafts in that place as well. But keep up with our Facebook page as well as our website. We appreciate your staying connected with us throughout the summer. Friends, I invite you to stand and greet one another in the name of the Lord.
call to worship is found in the bulletin. The God who answers in a day of trouble is among us. The God who lights a candle during the night is here. Hearts rejoice, for peace has triumphed over trouble, and mourning has broken over eternal life. you to remain standing as you are able in body or in spirit and to join me in the invitation and prayer of confession that you will find printed in your bulletin. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. 
We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. You may be seated, and I would invite the children who are present to come forward for children's moments with me. to see you all today. How are you? Good. So I have a list of some crazy laws. There are some silly laws out there. Did you know that? Laws as in things that we're supposed to do or not do. So there is a city in Arizona where it is illegal to drive a car in reverse. How do you get out of your parking spot? How about this one? There's a town in Minnesota where a woman can be arrested for impersonating Santa Claus. <laughs> I wonder if she could be Mrs. Claus. In Fairbanks, Alaska, it is illegal to serve an adult beverage to a moose, in case you were wondering. And in Nicholas County, West Virginia, a preacher is not allowed to tell a joke from the pulpit. <laughs> so, what do you think? Are those some pretty silly laws? Those are kind of silly, aren't they? Well, can you think of a time maybe with, oh, I don't know, the Santa Claus, or maybe even the driving in reverse, where it might be necessary to do that? I can think of a couple of times. Can you? When you might need to drive in reverse? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, there's a story in the Bible today that we're going to be reading just after we finish our children's moments, and it talks about a time where the Pharisees, can you say that word, Pharisees? You know why they were called that? Because they're not fair, you see. Okay, never mind, yeah. <laughs> I'm not in the pulpit. <laughs> so the Pharisees, they believed in keeping all the laws. And one of the laws was to keep the Sabbath holy. And the Sabbath was the day of rest. And Jesus and his disciples were walking through a grain field and they were hungry. And so they popped off some of the grain and they ate it. And the Pharisees were telling them, you can't do that. That's against the law. And then... The next thing that happened was Jesus healed a boy with, a, or a man, with a hand that was in need of healing. And they fussed at Jesus for that because he did it on the Sabbath. Now, I'm not saying that the Sabbath and keeping it holy is silly because we should definitely do that. It's one of our Ten Commandments. But Jesus wanted us to know, and I want to say this right, Jesus wanted us to know that the laws... Let's see. The Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people and not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. So the Sabbath is to help us to connect with God, to rest and to renew our minds and our bodies and our souls. And the way that we do that is by being at peace with God. And so now harvesting a whole field of grain, that's probably what they were talking about, but popping a few heads of the grain off and eating them, I think that Jesus understood, I think Jesus understood that that was when they were making the law almost sound silly. 
What we need to know is that God loves us so much that he created this whole world and everything in it. And how many days did it take? How long did it take God to create the whole world and everything in it? Six days, because you know what he did on the seventh? He rested. And just like God, we are made in God's image, so we too must rest. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to be faithful in following the teaching in your word. But also, help us to follow the example of Jesus in loving and caring for others. We love you. Amen. 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 for the reading of the gospel. We bring the gospel to the center of the people as a reminder of Christ, the living word of God. Hear now the reading from Mark 2 through Mark 3, 6. One Sabbath, he was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? After he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abathar was a high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priest to eat. And he gave some to his companions. And then he said to him, The Sabbath was made for humankind not humankind for the Sabbath. And so the, man, and so the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man who was there had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful? to do good, or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save a life or to kill it. But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart, and he said to the man, stretch out your hand. The man stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Thank you. You may be seated. Will you join me in prayer? O Lord, as the psalmist wrote, and if generations have proclaimed, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We're not going to talk about politics or religion. I don't know about jokes, but some people don't want politics or religion from the pulpit. But I hear that with conversations. People say in, the, in conversations at home and at work, it's just better that we don't talk about religion or politics. It's the way that we can all get along to keep the conversation polite and civil. That's not a bad thing because I think we have all seen gentle conversations and reasonable debates that have devolved into heated arguments and shouting matches about what is right and what is wrong, about what is good and what is bad. The thing about religion and about faith, why it needs to be spoken and conversed it's not just about what we think. It's, it's not just about what we do on Sunday. It's about how we live our life every day. I can remember that the observance of the Sabbath used to be, for some, a very controversial thing. There are people in this sanctuary who grew up in a time when nearly every restaurant in Sumter was closed on Sunday except for Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A was closed too. That's just today. But back then, they were all closed. By law, most retail stores were closed as well. If you lived and can remember those times, raise your hand. You may have even had a grandmother who enforced the Sabbath law in your home. There would be no cards played, no movies watched, no swimming or any other activities on Sunday. And in some people's homes, you didn't even cook. All of this ways that we used to do Sabbath leads us to today's scripture lesson and the observance of the Sabbath with Jesus and the Pharisees. God made remembering the Sabbath and keeping it holy and different from the other days of the week, God made that a commandment. Because the Sabbath was meant to bring humanity closer to what God called it to be through rest and restoration through study and worship and building human relationships. That's why it was okay to go visit grandma on Sunday. The Pharisees were all about, however, a list of do's and don'ts that guided the community. And adherence to that commandment of God meant that you had to strictly observe those do's and don'ts. But then on the other side of the debate was Jesus who believed that the Sabbath was meant to serve humanity. That Sabbath practices were shaped to human need to be with God rather than a set of do's and don'ts wedged into human relationships and human practice. Unfortunately, this healthy debate in the Gospel of Mark turns ugly by the end of the reading. As the Pharisees leave the synagogue and plot to destroy Jesus. They wanted to kill him because not only did he think differently, but he acted on his thoughts. If this de debate in the Gospel of Mark that turned divisive and even bloody 
was the exception to the rule about how we discuss and understand faith and religion, it would be one thing. If this were the exception, that'd be nice. But it's not. Human history is burdened with heated arguments, with factionalism, with scuffles, and even wars over issues of faith and religion. Friendships have ended, families torn, nations and denominations divided, and countless lives lost over the course of human history because of differences about faith and religion. We fight, we argue, because people have competing convictions and values, traditions and commitments. They have different understandings of doctrine and absolutes, what their preferences are, and what they see as essential. These compete for all of us. We see the world, each one of us sees the world differently. For many of us, this way that we see the world, these absolutes, these doctrines, these commitments, these essentials are paramount in our lives. Human beings have fought over issues that seemed truly consequential in the time that they were fighting. In the history of the Christian church, you know how uh, Catholics and Greek Orthodox cost themselves you know, there was a fight at one time in Christian history with whether you should cross yourself with two fingers or with three. There have been fierce arguments about how many angels could dance on the head of a pen. Now those arguments, they got heated, but they didn't turn violent and bloody but we have had violent and bloody examples. We have fought over divisions about doctrine concerning the authority of the church and the clergy in the Reformation. We have had heated arguments within our own denomination and its antecedents about whether clergy could consume alcohol and tobacco. We have fought as Christians about the possibility that people of other races could attend and join the same congregation. And we have just wondered whether women and persons of other colors should be ordained. Some have even argued about the use of instruments in worship. Now, I'm not talking about the chimes or the timpani, I'm talking about the organ. There were times that people got very excited and very fervent about the use of the organ in worship. We have fought, Christians have, over the true version of the Bible that the faithful should read. Denominations have formed and split over these issues. Sadly, it's not just institutions that pay the cost for our argumentative indulgence. It's people. Sometimes it's a person's worth that is ignored or discounted. Too many times human life is extinguished because of religious differences. The Reformation that I talked about just a minute ago where Christian and Protestant denominations were formed against the Catholic Church. Well, all that happened in the high drama of war and suffering. And this morning, as we gather in Trinity Sumter, we gather in a place that is only nearby, that is only one block away. There's a mu museum going there a museum that will remind future generations of the Holocaust. The Holocaust 
where millions of men, women, and children were murdered because their religious practices were different. The Holocaust, where if we stood silent for one minute for each individual victim, we would stand silent for over 20 years. As the marker down the street says, few are guilty, but all are responsible. People of faith have demeaned, demoralized, and destroyed people in the name of being right. So how do we move past that? Can we move past that? Our scriptures today can help us. First, let's acknowledge that the Pharisees were absolutely right. And they were absolutely wrong. The Sabbath is important. We need a time to claim God's greatness and address our need for restoration in a relentless 24-7, 365 world. We need Sabbath. They were absolutely right about that. The place where they were wrong is in their rightness because their rightness was the only thing that they saw. It was a standard that allowed no room for anything else. Their rightness made them blind to the needs of the man with the withered hand, blind to what the Son of God could do to bring healing and wholeness in that one place at that time. Rightness, as one scholar wrote, will never get us Jesus, the Lord of the Sabbath. Because rightness is not always about compassion. Rightness is not always about love. The compassion of the Pharisees had withered as much as the man's hand, and it was just as useless. The Pharisees had a, a petrified faith. It was a good faith in that it was obedient, but it was a faith that was drained of compassion and care. They only saw their position. They only saw their doctrine. And with their doctrine and with their position, they drew a line. And they dared Jesus to cross that line. And Jesus did cross that line. Not because Jesus thought any less about the Sabbath than the Pharisees did, but because Jesus thought more of the man with the withered hand. And ironically, more of the Pharisees themselves. Jesus had compassion for the man with the withered hand. The man that was not able to provide for his family, he was less than because of his condition. Maybe his hand was withered since birth. Maybe it was withered because of arthritis. Maybe it was withered because of stroke. But it kept him from being able to provide for his family. Why not heal the man on the Sabbath? Because the Sabbath was meant for healing and restoration and resurrection. It was the perfect day for the man to be healed. The Sabbath is meant to serve humanity. But here's the thing. Jesus also had compassion for the Pharisees. Yes, he was angered. He was grieved. 
because their doctrine, their position overlooked and diminished the man with the withered hand. And Jesus was able to see that their hearts were hardened and that their faith was petrified. But Jesus did not discount them. He didn't cheapen their worth or take their lives. In fact, Jesus' ministry to the Pharisees would be a challenge for them to be better, to be more than a list of do's and don'ts. Jesus invited the Pharisees to see not just the rules and their set way of thinking, but the human beings beyond that God made and God loved. The faithful are called to see people. You and I are called to see people, not just rules and policies. Now, some of the religious leaders, some of the Pharisees got it. Nicodemus got it. Joseph of Arimathea got it. They got that Jesus died for everybody, including the Pharisees. <clears throat> Perhaps the lessons in the synagogue that day are deeper than the observance of the Sabbath. Maybe there's a word here for us today in our denominational debates and personal arguments that threaten friendships, that threaten church mission, that even can serve as a threat to life itself. There are more important and deeper things than being right. There are deeper things than winning. Deeper things than our experience and the way that we think about the world. The deeper things or how we see the sacred worth of each other beyond the cataracts of our doctrine and the certitude of our absolutes. The deepest thing, the highest standard for Jesus and for those of us who will follow him, the deeper standard is love. The deeper commitment is to see people and not just our position. Love and compassion are how we draw closer to God and how God draws closer to us. Through the lens of compassion, that's how Christ sees each one of us in our brokenness and in our wholeness and in our call and in the call to be more. And it is through the lens of compassion that Christ invites us to truly see one another. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, with the courage of the children of God, let us stand and recite the Apostles' Creed, the traditional version found on page 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. As we prepare to go to God in prayer this morning together, we ask that you please continue to remember all of those who are listed in the prayer section in our bulletin, not just today, but throughout the week. And uh, we ask that you especially this week pray for Joseph Chapman as he continues to heal from a severe case of mono. Um, and pray for mom and dad as they are offering care to him at home. We are thankful for the healing that was uh, taken place with Kate Fair. Uh, we prayed last week for her as she was in the hospital and she actually made it back to school this week before they let it out for summer and so we are thankful for that. And ask that you please keep uh, Hugh and Francis Betchman in your prayers as they head to Charleston this week uh, for the beginning of treatment for Hugh. And so please do keep them in your prayers for healing and, and for safe travels. This coming Saturday, we have a group of about 13 or 14 youth and adults that are going to be traveling to the Loris Salkahatchee. And if any of you all are here today, if you'd quickly stand up, if you'll be going to Loris Salkahatchee. We had some in the early service. Um, but if you would, please, not only those who are coming or going from our church, but all youth and adults who will be participating in Salkahatchee this summer throughout our state. And uh, finally, after service today, Joseph and Paul Riggs and myself and Ann Walker will be headed to annual conference, which will take place Sunday today through Wednesday, and ask that you please keep our conference in your prayers. Let us go to God. Almighty God, Lord of all creation, we rejoice in the sunrise of each day, whether veiled in clouds or brilliant with colors of morning. We celebrate your glory revealed in the face of Jesus Christ, whether in the somber light of Good Friday or the bright glory of resurrection morning. We live in the light of your spirit thankful for a new understanding of your purpose for us and for fresh courage to face adversity. We praise you and we thank you. Oh God, now that summer has taken its place with longer days and undeniable heat, with schools that are coming to an end and vacations that are being scheduled, we come to you and give you thanks for a season of rest and Sabbath. Create in us this day a new rhythm of life, composed of hours that sustain rather than stress, of days that deliver rather than destroy, of time that tickles rather than tackles. You are a liberating Lord, and so we ask that by the rhythm of your truth, you would set us free from the bondage that tries to break us, from the baggage of those who fail us, and the chains that bind us to plans and pursuits that prey upon us. Raise us to the rhythm of your new life, dead to deceitful calendars and dead to the emptiness of busyness. Help us to claim peace in our weekly endeavors, stillness to our over-caffeinated conscience, and release us from our suffocated selves. Instead of drowning in deadlines, help us to rest in you. You are the great physician. Cure us, healing Christ, on this and every day of rest, that being restored in body, mind, and spirit, we will do what is good, learn what is helpful, and return to our daily work invigorated and inspired. Help us to truly see 
all your people. Place your healing hand upon all those in need, and especially Joseph, Ernie, and Hugh. And Lord, give safety to those who will participate in Salkahatchee. Be with them as they reunite with relationships built in the past and as they make new relationships this summer. Be with homeowners who so graciously open their homes and transform hearts, O oh God, that we would come to know just how beautiful servanthood is when shared among all your people. And God, be with us this annual conference. Help us to move forward with wisdom, to have compassion, and to do all things with love so that in all things you are glorified. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill your church that our worship will be pleasing to you, that our prayers would change our hearts instead of trying to get you to change your mind. Help us to be your disciples, to listen with your ears, to see with your eyes, to love with your perfect love, and to rest in your holy presence. We ask all of these things in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, because we love you. Amen. At this time, I would invite our ushers to come forward as we offer to God his tithe and our offering.
Thank you. You may be seated. Our service continues with the service of Word and Table on page 15 of your hymnal. It is uh, key to the responses that I give for this day from the resource, uh, Lift Up Your Voices. Uh, it is a resource here that is key to uh, the scripture readings for today. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. It is, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to give our and it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. When your people were not satisfied, they demanded a king. To govern them, you gave Saul to rule over them. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of our might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, when he taught the Pharisees the true nature of the Sabbath, they conspired to destroy him. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water, and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. And he gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from this, all of you. This, this is the cup of forgiveness. It's the cup of salvation. It's poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and in thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we Proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on these gifts. Make them be for us. The body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood and by his love. By your spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other. And one in final victory, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor, all glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now Angela will offer us instruction for sharing in the Lord's table. This morning, as we prepare to come to the table, we remind you that this is not the table of Trinity United Methodist, nor is it the table of the United Methodist Church. This is the table of Christ. And so all who wish to come are invited. As you come forward, if you would come, please, ready to receive the bread. It will be placed in your hands, and then you may dip it into the cup and receive both elements at once. This is the uh, process of intinction that we will take it by. If you are in need of a gluten-free element, that will be available, and it will be in the very center. And so please make sure uh, to know that, and then we'll have two stations on either side. Uh, if you would like to stop and pray, Joseph and myself will be on either side, and so we will be glad to have a moment of prayer with you. Uh, or you may also kneel at the rail uh, after receiving communion. You will come at the usher's direction, and please know, the table has been set. You are invited, and there is a feast for all. Will those who are assisting with communion please come forward now?
us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. <coughs> Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Sabbath day holy, so that all creation may be healed and restored in the abundant life of God. The grace of Christ surround you, the Holy Spirit sustain you, and the peace of God rest upon you, now and always. Go now in peace. Mm -hmm.